Christ is risen. Christ is risen Good, morning. Good morning. Welcome to the United Church of Christ Congregational here in Yankton, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. If you are a visitor with us, um, I keep forgetting to put another one of those cards here. Um, Look for the little white cards like that, like Judy is holding up uh, in your pew and fill it out so that we know who you are and that you are with us today. Our flowers this morning are shared with us with, uh, by Sylvia Selgestad in memory of her mom, Lois Jacobson. And today is the first Sunday of the month. So we celebrate birthdays and anniversary with a blessing. But yesterday, was our church's 156th birthday. And so I think that requires a happy birthday song for our church. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to us. Happy birthday, dear church. Happy birthday to us. A hundred and fifty-six years. That is quite a legacy. Will you pray with me? Creator of all, we thank you for the life you have given to all who will be celebrating their birthday this month and the life that this church has given to so many over the years. We pray that those that have a birthday this month uh, will have a special day filled with joy and peace and love, and we are grateful for the ways that they enrich our lives and pray for their year ahead to be blessed by you. We lift up those who celebrate an anniversary this month and give you thanks for the example of commitment, partnership, and love that they show us. We pray for their year ahead to bring them closer to each other and that it is filled with your blessings. Thank you for the gift of all these individuals in our church. In your holy name we pray. Amen. We may be imprisoned by many things, Jesus' declaration um, that he had come to set prisoners free can be interpreted for all of us. Whether or not we've ever experienced being behind literal prison bars, this day we will hear resurrection stories, or a resurrection story that moves from chains to freedom we will reflect on how we can take steps into freedom from whatever it is that binds us. Let us worship our God together. They were on the road to Emmaus. In this life, sometimes traveling towards, sometimes away from a life of freedom. Jesus came and fell into step with them, but they did not recognize him. We are sometimes so overwhelmed with the struggles of this world that we can't see the companion that walks alongside us. Jesus asked them what they were talking about. We have recited our stories of pain so often that we can't imagine there are other ways to interpret events to get past the regret. 
They explained the horror of the recent past, about their friend who was crucified, and their disappointment at dreams of liberation dashed. We so often think we've hit the end of the road, the, fi the finale of the story, with nothing left to say. Then Jesus began to tell the story as a bigger picture. We sometimes perceive only the parts that feel insurmountable without zooming out to notice the larger narrative of hope. They invited Jesus to dinner after such a long walk. We actually know how to reach out for help, even when we don't realize we need it. Jesus took the bread, blessed, broke, and gave it to them. We are capable of having our eyes opened to the presence of love in our midst. Jesus vanished from the room as quickly as he had appeared on the road, but they were left with the awe and wonder of having their hearts transformed. This is a word of hope for the people who long for it. Thanks be to the living word. Know that Christ accompanies you along the journey. Because of this, we can be honest about our lives, our struggles, and the things that keep us locked up. This is the key to peace. As soon as truth is spoken and the desire to be raised to new life is known in the name of Jesus Christ, we can know new life. Christ is risen. Let us share that peace of the risen Christ with one another. Peace. <laughs> peace. <laughs> peace, 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 peace. Oh. 
That's what I keep hearing around me. Sorry. Kelvin Wood to come forward. We need a mic. The mic on. Is it on? Is this better? Yep. Okay. We invite Natalie Steimark and Kelvin Wood to come forward, <clears throat> excuse me, to affirm their baptism by uniting with us in this household of faith. Friends in Christ, we all are received into the church through the sacrament of baptism. These people have found nurture and support in this church. They have been led by the Holy Spirit to affirm their baptism and to claim in our presence their covenantal relationship with Christ and the members of this church. They are here to serve Jesus the Christ using the gifts the Holy Spirit has given them. You are no longer strangers, but you are equal citizens with the saints and members of the household of God built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in Christ. You are also built into the structure as a dwelling place of God in the spirit. Do you, Calvin and Natalie, desire to affirm your baptism into the faith and family of Christ Jesus? Do you renounce the power of evil and the desire and desire the freedom of a new life in Christ? Do you profess Jesus to Christ as your savior? Do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciple, to follow in the way of Jesus, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best you are able? Do you promise according to the grace of God to grow in the Christian faith? and to be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ and furthering Christ's mission in the world. Please stand as you are able. Let us unite with the Church in all times and places in confessing our faith in the triune God. Do you believe in God? I believe in God. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Christ. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit. By your baptism, you were made one with us in the body of Christ, the church. Today, we rejoice in your pilgrimage of faith that which has brought you to this time and this place. We give thanks for every community of faith that has been your spiritual home along the way. And we celebrate your presence in this household of faith. Do you promise to participate in the life and mission of this family of God's people? sharing regularly in the worship of God and enlisting in the work of this local church as it serves this community and the world. Let us, the members of the United Church of Christ Congregational in Yankton, express our welcome and affirm our mutual ministry in Christ. We welcome you to join in the common life of this church. We promise you our friendship and prayers as we share the hopes and labors of the Church of Christ Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we continue to grow together in God's knowledge and love and be witnesses of your Savior. You may be seated. 
In the name of Jesus Christ and on behalf, behalf of the United Church of Christ Congregational, we extend a hand of Christian love welcoming you into our ch local church here. We are glad to have you here. Let us pray together. Loving God, we praise you for calling us to be your servant people and for gathering us into the body of Christ. We thank you for sending us these believers that we may work together in serving the needs of others. Confirm in us the power of your covenant that we may live in your spirit, share regularly in worship, and so love each other as Christ loved us. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Welcome. As we sing the next song, the children can come forward for the children's moment. Good morning. Good morning. So last week we celebrated Easter Day, right? And in church, come on up. In church, we talked a little bit about this. Oh, come on up. There we go. Good job. You want to have a seat? You want to sit by me? Okay. Last week, we talked a little bit about the fact that Easter isn't just Easter Day in the church. Easter is a whole season. And so during this Easter season, we are talking a lot about new life. And there is a place in this state that we talk about in this church a lot. Um, and might say is famous for new life. And I've got some clues about what that place might be in my magic box, my magic box. So I've got my invisible key. Let's open it up and see what's inside. Should I try the real key instead? Yeah. All right. Then you can give it back. And then I can give it back. All right. Oh, it worked. Thank you so much. All right. So I've got some pine cones. Yeah. I've got a finger rocket. Whee! And you, you can look at it. You want? No, don't shoot it at him. Just let him see it. <laughs> and I've got a picture. <laughs> I've got a picture here with a lot of trees and a sign that says, what does it say? We depart to serve. We depart to serve. Any ideas what this place might be? Well, there's a forest. It looks like a forest or woods there. And we've got the pine cones, so that matches, right? What do you think about that um, finger rocket? What do you think that might be about? Missile. No, no missile. A dart. A dart. Not a dart. Might it just be like fun and a games? Dart. Maybe just fun and games? For camp. What camp do you think? 
Is it God camp, summer camp? Yes, very good. Christ camp. It's a place out in the Black Hills, which is woodsy and foresty, and it's called Placerville Camp. And where else do you see the words, we depart to serve? Well, I mean in this room. Right there. So that is a sign. On the other side of that sign, it says United Church of Christ, Placerville Camp. That's the sign, that side of the sign, United Church of Christ, Placerville Camp, is the sign that greets you as you come into camp. We depart to serve is what you see as you exit camp because you're going out into the world to serve. But what is um, great about Placerville is it's a place where people often go to just spend time with God in nature. And people sometimes say that that gives them new life. It re-energizes them, it refreshes them, gives them the energy to come back into the real world. And it's also a place that people talk about having the feeling of freedom. Why do you think they'd feel free at church camp, God camp, Placerville camp? Are you pretty busy during your day and week here at home? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, you've got school, you've got your activities, you've got soccer. When you go to camp, you don't have any of that. And you know what else you don't have? Parents. <laughs> Freedom from parents. <laughs> <laughs> so there, <laughs> there are camps at Placerville for all ages, and there is lots of nature, a lot of t places to go hiking. There's yes, and there's lots of opportunity for fun. That's the reason for the finger rockets. There's lots of opportunity for fun. I don't know if you can see that picture behind me, that chapel. That chapel is at Placerville Camp. And on the bottom where you see those two windows, that is a big, wide open games area. And one of the games they play is finger rockets. Yeah. So they have camps for every age group, um, for really young ones. Moms can go and really young ones can get babysat. A little bit older ones can still go with mom but be at their own camp so they're still separate from mom. And then once you get into fourth, fifth grade, or third, second, third grade has camp, Fourth, fifth grade, sixth, eighth grade, ninth through twelfth grade, they all have their own camps and their own special kind of fun. Are you excited? Yeah. You want to go? Yeah. All right. I want everybody who wants to go, who has time to go, who will make time to go, to go to camp this year. And registration is open right now. It's best to register by May 1st, so if you really want to go, talk to your parents. Registration forms are in the back, and we will do everything we can to support you going to camp, include paying for part of your way. All right, does that sound like fun? So, There are, you know what, sometimes you see deer. There are, mm, I haven't ever seen any bears. There's. Sometimes you see cows. The camp directors have two big dogs that sometimes are at camp. You thought a cow was a bear? Well, they're big enough. They could be. Okay. All right. So the other thing we learned last week is that there are lots of ways to say alleluia, and that's a great way to praise God. Yeah. So when we praise God... Remember from last week, are we quiet and do it in whispers? 
or are we loud and shout it out? All right, so are you ready? Yeah. All right, repeat after me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Woohoo! Woo All, right. All right. Right on. Yeah. Way to go. Way to go. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Whoop, whoop. Whoop. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Notes on Freedom comes from Romans 8, verses 12 through 25 of the Inclusive Bible. Therefore, we are under an obligation, my siblings, but not to the flesh or to live according to the flesh. If you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live by the Spirit, you will put to death the evil deeds of the body, and you will live. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. For the Spirit that God has given you does not enslave you and trap you in fear. Instead, through the Spirit, God has adopted you as children, and by that Spirit we cry out, Abba. God's Spirit joins with our spirit to declare that we are God's children. And if we are children, we are heirs as well, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, sharing in Christ's suffering and sharing in Christ's glory. Indeed, I consider the sufferings of the present to be nothing compared to the glory that will be revealed in us. All creation eagerly awaits the revelation of the children of God. Creation was subjected to transience and futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it in hope that creation itself would be freed from its slavery to corruption and would come to share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that from the beginning until now, all of creation has been groaning in one great act of giving birth. And not only creation, but all of us who possess the first fruits of the Spirit. We too groan inwardly as we wait for our bodies to be set free. In hope we were saved, but hope is not hope if its object is seen. Why does one hope for what one sees? And hoping for what we cannot see means awaiting it with patient endurance.
The story of freedom comes from Acts 16, verses 16 through 34 of the Inclusive Bible. Once, when we were going to prayer, we met a household worker who was possessed by a spirit of divination and who made a great deal of money for her employers through its fortune-telling. She began to follow Paul and the rest of us, shouting, These are faithful followers of the Most High God who proclaim to you the way of salvation. She did this for many days. Finally, one day, Paul lost his temper and turned around and said to the spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to leave this woman. It left her at that moment. When her employer saw that their profitable operation was now hopelessly dead, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them before the authorities in the public square. They brought them to the chief magistrates and said, These people are Jews and are disturbing the peace by advocating practices which are unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in the attack on them, and the magistrates stripped them and ordered them to be flogged. They were whipped many times and thrown into prison, and the jailer was told to keep a close watch on them. So following these instructions, the warden threw them into the innermost cell of the prison and chained their feet to a stake. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God as the other prisoners listened. Suddenly, a severe earthquake shook the place, rocking the prison to its foundation. Immediately, all the doors flew open and everyone's chains were pulled loose. When the jailer woke up and found the doors wide open, he drew a sword and was about to commit suicide, presuming that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself, we're all still here. The jailer called for a light, then rushed in and fell trembling at the feet of Paul and Silas, and after a brief interval, led them out and asked them, what must I do to be saved? They answered, believe in Jesus the Savior, and you will be saved, you and everyone in your household. They proceeded to preach the word of God to the jailer and his whole household. At that late hour of the night, he took them in and bathed their wounds, then he and the whole household were baptized. He led them up into his house, spread a table before them, and the whole family joyfully celebrated their newfound faith in God. Will you pray with me? Lieve God, laten de woorden van mijn mond en de overpijnzingen van al onze harten u behagen, onze rots en bevrijden. Loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In our series of resurrection stories, the one um, that is handed out on your handout sheet today is the story of Jason DeFort, a former rapper who goes by the stage name Jelly Roll. He has a powerful resurrection story. In 2023, he had three number one country hits and was nominated for two Grammy Awards at the age of 39. Prior to that, he was imprisoned in the Metro Davidson County Detention Facility in Nashville, Tennessee. Jason spent his teenage years deep in the prison system, starting at the age of 14. He was in and out of prison for several offenses drug possession, dealing, shoplifting, aggravated robbery. He had a rough childhood with a mother who struggled with drugs and a father who booked bets. He loved music so much so that he even wrote songs in his jail cell. He would sell drugs on the streets and with it would give away a free mixtape of the music that he had recorded. Everything changed for him when he was 24 and he learned from his prison guard that he was a father of a baby girl named Bailey. Out of prison, DeFord continued to record and distribute his rap music until he experienced a breakthrough in 2020 with an acoustic version of one of his songs that caught the ear of country music fans. The following year, he performed at the Grand Ole Opry, and the rest is history. Now Jelly Roll visits the prisons still, 
but this time he visits speaking words of hope to inmates as he shares his story of redemption with them in the hopes that they will be inspired. In the first scripture story that was echoed between Dave and me, we see the disciples surprised that their companion on the road has not heard about the story of Jesus. They fill him in on all the tragedies that happened and the unbelievable witness of the women. But Jesus, who was the one walking with them, already knew all these stories and that death could not be confined anymore. Jelly Roll was, Jelly Roll was freed from bondage through the birth of his daughter and through his music. But the most powerful part of his story is that once he found freedom, he did not leave others behind. He still goes back to prison to tell the story of freedom and to love the other incarnate, incarcerated people in the hopes that they too will find a way out of their bondage. It's okay, just let him walk around. It's all right, he's fine. His story is powerful because it allows... <laughs> it's all right. It really is okay. He's fine just to walk around. Don't worry about it. Um, his story is powerful because it allows us to believe that something that was once impossible is now possible. Witnessing the freedom stories of others helps us to imagine ourselves free from whatever, whatever it is that keeps us locked up. When Jesus opened the scriptures for the disciples on the road, they remarked on how their hearts burned within them. Paul's words in Roman 8 that we heard read second to the Church of Rome reminds us of the family connection that is created when we become part of the body of Christ, like Natalie and Calvin did this morning. When we cry out to God, the Holy Spirit witnesses to our spirit that we are God's children. Freedom comes through our adoption into God's glorious family. During Jelly Roll's final uh, prison stent in 2008 when he learned that he was the father of a little girl born to a previous girlfriend. This news changed his life. He resolved to become a good father figure to this daughter. Things that change in our families, um, sometimes people leave, sometimes people get at it. We can choose what we do with those changes. We can stay trapped in the same cycles of behaviors that keep us um, in our bondage, or we can choose to create new cycles, new life-giving cycles in our families. In the book of Acts, we see Paul ending up in prison a lot. In the story we heard today, we find Paul and his friend Silas being imprisoned after driving out a spirit of divination of a woman and robbing her employers of the money scheme that they were profiting from through her. Those employers marched Paul and Silas into the marketplace before the authorities and riled up the crowd to attack them and flog them. Paul and Silas suffered many injustices and they ended up bound and placed in the innermost cell of the prison. I don't know about you, but the last thing I would want to do is what they did. Paul and Silas end up praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners are listening to them. This is a reminder that even when we are imprisoned, even when we may not feel positive or don't see any light at the end of the tunnel. We can still pray. We can still sing and make a joyful noise to God. Jelly Roll, too, spends his time in prison on things most probably don't. He wrote many of the songs um, that he sings in his time in prison. 
Some of those songs led him to Grammy Awards and to number one hits. Each of us can be held captive by many things, fear, anger, self-loathing, and so many other restrictive realities. And they can make other challenges seem impossible to endure. But as Easter people, we are not doomed to be condemned. And what we do even during our imprisonment and our confinement can benefit us when we get set free. So let us keep moving forward with life-giving steps towards freedom with the help of the unconditional love of God, the peace of Christ, and the creativity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This table where Christ invites us to come all, where we're all equalized before God, this table is a table of freedom. It is at this place when we come and we share in the feast that we are also forgiven. It's where we are reminded that God's unconditional love is poured out over us all the time. And that even in the midst of violence and sacrifice, God is not separated from us. Death does not even keep God from us. But God is with us and creates new life and resurrection all the time out of things that have died in our lives. It was on the night that Jesus was to be betrayed that he took the bread and broke it, saying, this is my body broken for you. 
Every time you eat from this bread, remember me. In the same way, he took the cup that had been poured out that night, blessed it, and said, this is the cup of the new covenant for the forgiveness of all sins. Every time you drink from this cup, remember me. As we share this meal this morning, I invite you to reflect on the ways that God sets you free in so many ways. Oh, yes, we're praying. Sorry, Roger. I'll give you this mic. Okay. Oh, no, I can't do that. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Sorry about that. My mistake. Let's pray. Well, this makes it easier. <laughs> Lord, Easter is now behind us, and some of us are inclined to say, take a deep breath and relax. But would you please pray with me now? Some may find ourselves struggling to believe the resurrection of Jesus. Even though we as Christians fully believe in the resurrection, we come again to communion because it is important and Jesus wants us to remember that every time we taste bread and wine, that he is the one who provides all we need. He provides to all who come here, for we are all baptized by one spirit to form one body, whether Jews, Gentiles, slave, or free. And we all are given the one spirit to drink. We are now in this place at this time to hear you, not to hear our anxious voices, not to hear our sorrows, not to hear our fears. Let your voice find us and heal us in our failures, losses, and sorrows, and our uncertainty. Help us to hear your voice. We thank you who gave your only son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Amen. Amen. Bread of life.
isolation. Sorry. cup of salvation. All right, thank you. Um, my first announcement is what I forgot last week that please, if you ordered um, flowers, Easter flowers, please take those home with you um, from the sanctuary. Then I have a text from Pam Kettering. Bill ben Benhard passed away Thursday in Rapid City. He and family were very active in this church in the past. Um, and then we have church t-shirts for sale. Um, pictures and order forms are downstairs in Pilgrim Hall, and Laura is working on creating something so you can also order online, and so you would be able to order with cards. Uh, but to start out, there are pictures and order forms downstairs. We'll get some... <laughs> we'll get some samples. <laughs> So you can also feel the material, but I haven't gotten there yet. So we're starting, um, we'll have probably um, time to order for about a month, and then we'll send in our order if we have enough um, to send in the order. Then today we're restarting the next episode of The Chosen at 4.30 this afternoon in the sanctuary uh, with our conversation and pizza after work. Child care is provided, so the whole family is welcome. Uh, as we see our scriptures that we read on Sunday mornings come to life of Jesus and his disciples on the screen, episode by episode. And then there are many other announcements. Good morning. You know, these little green bottles aren't just in the back of the church for decorations. They have a purpose. And the purpose is this small one just holds quarters very nicely. 
you say, well, I don't have any quarters. Well, then take a bigger bottle because you don't have to put in quarters. You can put in dollars. We take those too. So these bottles help us with the loads of love. And next Sunday, you have the opportunity to bring back the green bottle you're going to take home with you today, and you're going to put lots of money in it so that we can help our neighbors with their loads of love on the 16th of April. So do you all understand? And if you're going to take a green <laughs> bottle home with you today, please raise your hands. Come on, get those hands up. Get those hands up. And don't forget to take your green bottle home with you. And if you do, just bring some cash in your pocket because we'll take just plain cash that isn't in a green bottle too. And we'll take checks made out to loads of love, like in the memo. Yeah, checks it, it work too. Loads of love. And we'll get it there. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. I guess that, okay, God, get it. I guess that was <laughs> um, you guys are supposed to be beside me, remember? Yeah. Not behind. Right here. Right here. We're here. Okay. <sighs> Good morning. Good morning. UCC. Drinking coffee every day. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> That phone has a life of its own, I swear. Um, so, I was told I get five minutes by Mr. Kettering, who said he didn't want to see 10 point font, single spaced on three pages. So I only have three pages, but there's lots of spacing. And so, but I will try to get through this in five minutes. Um, but I would like to start with a cheer. So, can I have a U? You. Yes. you. Can I have a C? C. C. And another C? C. And what's it spell? United, United C. C. United Church of Christ <laughs> Congregational. And why are we so special? Because we are a strong church that has been successful for 156 years. Come on. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> You know, our family farm was homesteaded just on the other side of the river here in 1872, which I think means this church was here then when my great-grandparents who immigrated from Bohemia in Germany homesteaded that. We have Ulysses S. Grant's signature on the homestead papers. It's pretty cool. But this church was here then. That's just amazing. Just, just amazing. Anyway, okay. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Val Torstensen, and I am your 2024 church moderator. 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 Yay. <laughs> Yay. moderator. Um, and why are we here? We are here to reintroduce you to your 2024 church consul. Yay. Yay. All right. So this leadership team, church consuls, they start in February. So this church council, this team started just, what? This is just really only the beginning of April. So two months ago. Now, the standard operating procedure, as we understand it, is that church consuls meet once a month for one hour. Well, 
Let me tell you, that standard operating procedure kind of went out the door in our very first meeting in February. So what do we mean by that? Um, in February, this team decided that, um, and I'm going to read a little bit here so I don't miss anything, uh, said, you know, what are we going to do this year? And so everybody has the standard policies and procedures and all those things we normally follow, but what are we going to do this year, right? So this team agreed on three priorities for 2024, the things that this team thought were important for this church. The first thing was we felt this church needed to revisit, maybe reevaluate, maybe refresh our vision. Where are we going? Where do we want to be by 2030, let's say? What, uh, you know, who said it yesterday? Uh, if you don't have a target, you're lame. <laughs> say that again. If you don't have a target, you'll always hit it. There you go. <laughs> so we kind of need a North Star. We want to kind of refresh that, re-energize that. Where are we going? So there's going to be an effort that we're going to prioritize this year to think about. Let's go back and look at our vision. Let's look at our values. Let's look at what we stand for and what we think we need to do. And so that was number one. Number two, we all agreed we need to improve increase and expand our communications. Good teams have great communication. We want to improve our congregation engagement. We are all a team here. Good teams always have and practice healthy communications. Often, you know, slap early and often, Communicate early and often. There can't be too much communication. We think we need to expand on that, improve on that. We, those healthy communications, we'd like to focus on calling people in, not calling people out. Um, and this <coughs> is a part sometimes of dealing with conflict. We felt that maybe there are some things here. Although we're a very strong church, we've been successful 156 years, we want to be successful for another 156 years, but we do have some issues. So let's face those. Let's, 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 let's deal with those. So better communication, conflict, working with each other, good teams do that. Um, all right, and the third thing was we felt that we should take a look at our Ministry teams, how we're organized today. Um, we have 12 or 13? 12. 12 ministry teams. And there's three or four people on each ministry team. That's 36, 48 people. That's a lot of people. They all sign up for three years. That's a lot of time. That's a lot of people. Are we organized to be the best that we can be? And so we're going to take a look at the ministry teams and who does what and how often do they do that? And is there overlap or redundancy? Are there gaps? Are there, do we need more ministry teams? Um, so we're going to take a look at that. So those were our three priorities. So I said the SOP went out the door in February. We talked about a lot of things that we have to do this year. So this team, not one hour a month, this is March, really February, March, this team has already met five times. This team has already spent, I'm gonna estimate, and I'm probably being conservative here, 13 hours in just the first couple of months. Uh, this team actually sat downstairs yesterday morning and afternoon for five hours. This team is serious about this. We are gonna go after these things we're going to include you all, and this, we're just going to make this happen. We're also we're going to work hard. We're going to have some fun while we're working hard, because we firmly believe that if we're having some fun while we're working hard, we will make a difference, and that's what we want to do this year in these areas. So um, I'm very proud. I'm very humbled. This is an amazing team. I, I got to tell you guys seriously. I've, I've I've been doing this for They 
are. Let me see. I tried to think about some adjectives. They're energizing. They're excited. They're smart. They're perceptive. They're respectful. They listen. They're passionate. They're, and they're dedicated to this church. They're like magic. It's like they make magic happen. It's like synergy. Anybody know synergy? That's when two plus two equals five. I sat there yesterday, and one person had an idea, and then another person, yeah, but had they had another idea, and then somebody had an idea, and then pretty soon we had better ideas. It, it was just like, like wow, yeah, that's, that's really amazing. Just can't say enough about this team. Okay, so here's the kicker. Everything I just talked about, well, first thing we did yesterday morning, in the first hour of our time together, we got for the first time to hear and see the results of the church, the congregation really, survey that we took last year. Does everybody remember that survey we took last year? Yeah, well, guess what? 75 people of this congregation responded to that survey. That's amazing. That is a great survey result. Seriously. It wasn't 20 people or 30 people or 40. It was 75. So we really are hoping and, and expecting, and it's going to be our assumption, that that is basically the heart and soul of this congregation that, was, that, was, um, that responded. So that's really good. So here's the deal. I'm almost done, Don. All right, so, so what does this mean? So it means that we're going to start our communication business right away uh, with our priorities, right? We've talked about communication. Um, so especially with respect to that, starting next week, we're, we want to bring in the congregation, right? We want to increase and improve engagement with the conversation, con conversation congregation. Um, so, starting next week, and I'm, somebody's going to have to keep me honest here, because I'm not sure I'm going to have all this right. Mm -hmm. Starting next week, on s whatever that Sunday is. April 14th. April 14th. Thank you. The, uh, at 9 o'clock, from 9 to t about 9.45. The, the, the recording is about 45 minutes. We're going to play it here in the sanctuary before service from about 9 to 9.45. And then we're going to play it here in the sanctuary again after service from about 11.15 to 12 o'clock. So people will have two opportunities to sit and listen to the survey results. Um, it's a third-party company that did the survey. It's totally objective. Um, they will present the results in a PowerPoint-type format, but they will also offer editorial comments, observations about the results that they're seeing. It's very exciting. It's very enlightening. Um, it's honest from what we could see. And I'm going to add it's a little courageous, too, from the respondents. So very, very good. So we're going to do that next week, next starting next Sunday, here in the sanctuary, 9 to 9.45-ish. And then after service from about 11.15 to 12, people can have time to go downstairs, get their coffee, and maybe come back up if they want and watch it. And then, if I get this right, the following Sunday is going to be a listening Sunday. So what we're going to do then, same time frames, 9 to about 9.45 before service the following Sunday, it's going to be a listening session. We're going to be here. And we're going to ask those that would like to provide feedback the opportunity to do that. So we're going to listen. We're going to take notes. And that's the 9 and 9.45 before service. And then after service, same thing, about 11.15 to 12. Anybody that wants to provide feedback after they have seen this, this presentation, this recording, um, we, will, we will welcome that. Then the following Sunday, we're not kidding here, <laughs> we're going to repeat the recording, presentation of the recording, again, from 9 to 10, or quarter 9.45 before the service and after the service. And then the following Sunday, we're going to have another listening session from about you know, 9 to 9.45 before service and 11.15 to 12 after service. And what we ask is, uh, in addition to this, we're also, as I understand it, 
in the website, the communicator, communicator the email. email, the links, links, to the Facebook, do we have that? Yeah. Facebook, the links to the recording and the PowerPoint will all be there so you can go out, in addition to listening to it here, you can go out anytime you want, follow the link and, and, and see and view the recordings. Our hope is that you will review the, listen to the recordings, think about it, take notes, and come back to us with your thoughts on what you've heard and what you've seen. We're really, really begging. I'm not above groveling. In my career, I've learned to grovel really well. So I will be begging people, please come, be honest, be open, be candid, Tell us what you think about what you heard. This is your congregation. 75 people responded. This is the results of that. We want to hear what you think about that. That's critical. Does that make sense to everybody? OK, cool. And then I just want to say that uh, on that theme of communication, going forward, there's a lot we got to still figure out how to do. Um, Every Sunday, or not every Sunday, we decided, at least once, hopefully twice a month, we'll get up here and we won't take this long. <laughs> but somebody, we will give the congregation an ongoing update as to where we are on these things. And our hope is it won't be a surprise because you will have been part of what we're doing. Um, so our hope is that as we go throughout the year, you're, we're all engaged in this. It's a big team effort and go team go. Our hope is that by the end of the year, we've learned some things about ourselves. Maybe we have a better idea of where we think we're going and how we're gonna get there and how we're going to be a better team. How did, anything, what did I miss? Don's going, enough, okay. I got something Thank to say. You, Dan. Oh, Don's got, oh cool. <laughs> we've got a fantastic leader here. <laughs> Don, that's embarrassing. Seriously. You, I love you, ma'am. <laughs> I love you too, man. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. S stay tuned. Stay tuned. Oh, one more. I am so, so sorry that I have to make an announcement right now. <laughs> Next Saturday, uh, April 13th at 7 o'clock, we'll have First Plymouth Choir and Tom Trenny here. We have waited a year and a half to get them to come here. They are fabulous. Tom is going to play a couple organ pieces. Their choir has traveled to Russia. They are, it's a 50. He's bringing, he thought, I thought he was bringing 40. Now he tells me he's bringing 50. Um, they're good. Just to tell you about Tom Trenny, I would never, ever play in front of him. He is tremendous. You're going to love him, and he's a wonderful guy. So next Saturday at 7, please come, bring friends. We'll have a lot of fun. that take flowers. There's extra ones, even if you did not buy some. Please take them. When you entered, you were given a key. It's a reminder that Jesus said, I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And so as we pray this morning, if you bring your key back any Sunday morning during this Easter season, or when you're praying at home, just hold that key close to you as a reminder that Jesus is um, giving us the key to the kingdom of God's glory. Will you pray with me? Holy One, you are the creator of this amazing interdependent world where each living being depends on something else in this creation to live and to multiply. 
Your design requires diversity to work. We often lose sight of this and get caught up in independence and separation. We come before you caught in the web of so many different things that keep us stuck and bound up in those places. We ask that you break our chains of fear, complacency, superiority, us versus them, and all the other things that keep us from opening our hearts to each other and to accept each other as we are. God, we ask you to set us free to discover the amazing gifts that you have given to each of us and to share and build a reality where acceptance and love rule. We call upon the resurrected Christ to once again say to us, I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And we take a moment to contemplate the things that we like to unlock in our lives, unbinding us and setting us on the road to our own resurrection story. Let us unite our voices to pray the prayer Jesus taught us using the words most meaningful to each of us. Um, we're going to not sing our final hymn, by the way, because we are taking up a lot of time this morning. Jesus has empowered us with the Holy Spirit. We have life because of his presence with us. Let us join in God's abundance, giving what we can to offer peace to a hurting world. Today, our cash offering will go to the Deacon's Fund. All forms of offering are welcome. Please help the ushers pass the plate down the aisle.
Let us join our hearts and minds in the spirit of prayer. God of the resurrection, help us use these gifts to offer hope where there is sorrow, peace where there is chaos, and love where there is fear. We can do incredible things because your spirit lives within us. Amen. Hands, whatever binds you, whatever locks you up, whatever keeps you from the freedom for which you were created can be opened wide. For we believe our stories can be rewritten each and every day. We know it isn't this easy or quick, but let's let this be a vision of our life unlocked, your life resurrected. And now may you go into the world, unlocking freedom in all the ways you discover you can, for yourself, for others, for the world. And may the God who created you to be free, the Christ who showed you that f- what freedom looks like, and the Spirit who is transforming your life even now, be with you now and evermore. Amen.